know about you, but I'm so full, I'm ready for what Apostle Buddy has to bring forth. You should be ready, your heart should be full and ready for more. We were made for more. So can we welcome Apostle Buddy Crumb? Amen. Well, come on and praise God in this house. We've got so much to praise him for. You're here. You're here in his presence today because of his grace and his goodness, his desire for us to come and worship him and to exalt him. You uh, think I want to welcome all of you that are here and we're so glad that you came, but there are many, many more on the internet that have tuned in today and you came because, and you're watching today because you want to be in the presence of the Lord. And we know that when we're in his presence, he has things for us. Am I, can I, am I right? Am I okay? Yes. So I want to take authority against the enemy this morning and bind him because this is not his territory. He does not belong here. We have authority over him because Jesus died for us and to glorify the Father in heaven. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we take authority over every enemy, every, every antichrist spirit that would try to come and touch our hearts, touch our minds, to distract us away from the things of the Spirit. We declare today, Holy Spirit, that you're in charge, that you have brought healing today. In the name of Jesus, I speak to healing over bodies today, that every, every infirmity and every spirit spirit of infirmity is broken now in Jesus name and I declare that we've been set free for such a time as this and I declare every financial bondage is broken in Jesus name I break down the spirit of poverty I break down the spirit of lack I destroy the the spirit of mammon and I declare you go now in the name of Jesus and I declare restoration over our bodies over our families over our church, over the body of Christ, and we declare victory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If that's you, give him a shout. Give him a shout. Hallelujah, let him raise, let him be raised up, let him be glorified, let him be amplified, let him be exalted above all of our circumstances in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Join with us now, Holy Spirit. Bring to us your presence. Direct us into your direction and allow us to be filled with your presence. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen, glory. All right, all in agreement, say amen. All right, you may be seated. God bless you. I have a prophetic message, as every Life Center message should be a prophetic message. We're a prophetic house. And you know, I want to talk to you about today, about bringing down our Jericho walls. You know, we're at the end of last year, in the first, last quarter of last year at our conference, coming forth, every prophet spoke. We're entering into a time of unreleased and unprecedented uh, blessings in every way. And we've never been through a time like this before. And then we come into the, all of this resistance in, in these days and we say, wait a minute, wait a minute, prophet, did you miss it? But yet the prophets have continued this year to proclaim abundance, relief, freedom, and, and all of it. But you know, church, it still is. His word hasn't changed. But you see, we're having to go through a time of testing to be sure we're ready for the release. Can I hear an amen? You're being checked out. You're doing, I'm telling you, this is time of disclosure and exposure. And you got to know that you're right and ready for the release of all of his goodness and mercy and abundance. But his, he hasn't changed his mind and the prophets have spoken the truth. Well, I know it's a prophetic message because the other night I was in my dream. I said, I was standing before the Lord and I said, Lord, what do you want me to preach on? And just as clear, he said, Jericho. 
I said, Jericho. He said, Jericho. So we're going to talk about Jericho today. Amen and amen. Amen and how to bring down the Jericho walls. But it is a great time that we're in, and I don't want to minimize it, but we've, we don't want to go through this and miss what it is that the Spirit's trying to test and teach and, and, and drill down in us to bring forth the greatest abundance that we've ever experienced in life. Now, there are all kinds of walls. We know that. There are walls that we see and there are walls that we don't see. There are walls of our own walls and there are physical walls. And then actually their walls are there to keep out the enemy and to in keep in and protect those that need protection. But let me tell you something. The walls have been put up today to keep God's people out. Did you hear me? But we're going to penetrate those walls and they're coming down and we're going to see the captives set free because it's God's timing in his place. Yes. And so it is a time when the walls are going to come down. Now we're all familiar with the Jericho walls as probably even as a child growing up, if you went to church, you heard about the story of Joshua and the Jericho walls coming down because it was a wonderful event that happened in its historical events and excavators have finally defined it by finding it. And so it is true that it was a Jericho wall. It was a big wall, about 14 feet high and 11 feet wide. They could actually have horses and carriages and things on the top. It was a huge wall. It looked like it was impenetrable. It looked like it couldn't be destroyed. Have you ever heard of things in your life that you looked at and you said, there's no way those walls are coming down? Come on, I'm talking to somebody this morning. Somebody's already said that, but I want to declare to you that what was going on at the time of Jericho was a transition time. A transition time. You see, they were in Canaan land and they were ready to declare the victory that they had waited all these years to get to this place. And it was a time prophetically of abundance of milk and, uh, milk and honey and all of the abundance of life. Sounds familiar to today's prophetic word. But you see, before they could enter in, they had to make a transition. And the transition was that you have been under one, you've been under one covenant, now you're moving into another covenant. The covenant you've been under, under is bringing you through the wilderness with a fire by night and manna by day to get you to the place I'm taking care of you. But the Lord was saying to Joshua, it's time for the people to step up. It's time for the people to step up and claim their victory. I brought you to this place. Now you're going to have to see that you have the authority and power invested in you from me to take this territory. And I'm declaring that is where the church is today. It's time for us to rise up and take that which is promised and given and declared, but it's ours to take. Amen. And, and we're into that season where we're in transition. And a key part of that transition, if we go back before we read here about Jericho Wall, I want to talk to you just a moment, a couple of verses preceding the chapter 6 of Joshua. We're going to be talking about chapter 6 of Joshua. But in the fifth chapter, this is a key piece for then and now. And it came to pass... This is Joshua 5, 13. When it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us? Or are you for our adversaries? And he said, No. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? And then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take your sandals off your foot for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did it. This is so important because you see this was a prophetic demonstration and illustration of not only that time but for today because that was the captain of the host of the army of the Lord. He was a chosen one and obviously Joshua recognized him as part of the triune God because he knelt down and worshipped him and took off his shoe because it was a sacred place. I'm here to tell you today that the Holy Spirit 
represented the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, it says, I'm at ready, I'm prepared, I'm ready, the land's been given to you, and I'll help you give it. I'm a captain of the army of the host, but you got to take it with me. Come on, church, let me hear some amens this morning. Because that was what he was, and we're standing there, and if you get this picture, the Holy Spirit is right here, ready to join in and empower us and direct us and guide us if we'll take the courage and if we'll stand on his word and we'll take the territory that's been given to it. It's been prophesied. But we cannot stand here in fear and blame everybody else for our problems when it's our authority and responsibility. Come Holy Spirit, give us direction, give us guidance, give us your power, give us your anointing, give us what we need to take the victory for the, for the kingdom of God. And so we see that that's a very transitional. So we get the picture here. Now, that's interesting because now we're going to pick up. I'm going to read a few verses. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. Let me, let me tell you something, church. The reason it was shut up, they had heard that Israel was coming. They heard that there was a powerful army, that God had destroyed all enemies preceding their getting to this place. They heard that everything that, that God wanted, he got through his people. Let me tell you, people are afraid of the church. We're a wimpy little church, but we're going to grow up and get strong. Come on, church. Yeah, we've allowed the enemy to seduce us and get us over here distracted in the things of the, of the world when he's saying, I've overcome the world. You've got to get over here and build up your muscles and get ready to take some territory. Amen. So we read, let me read on the rest of it. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. I've given it to you. I've prophesied it. I've proclaimed it. I've declared it. I had to clean out the disbelievers, but I've got you here. Jericho in the hand of the king and the mighty man of valor, men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war, and you shall go all around in the city once. This you shall do six days, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass when they made a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city shall fall down and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Now that's what the directions were. Those were the, the directions of the, of the Holy Spirit speaking to the, Lord, the army of hosts, speaking to Joshua and telling him how this thing's going to work. And then let's go over and see what had happened in verse 20 and 21. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Amen. They took the city. They took the city. The walls came down, but they took the city. What we see here is the, is the picture of their seven priests. There must be something important about this seven number. Seven priests, seven ram horns, seven trumpets, seven days they would go around. The seventh day they'd go around seven times and it would, then they would shout and it would come down. There was, a, and the key to this is as they went, now get this picture. Here's the army, here the seven priests, and here's the Ark of the Covenant right in the middle. Now where do you think God's supposed to be? He's supposed to be right in the middle of us as an army, us as a priest, and right in the middle, and the people themselves, this made up all of them. They couldn't march three million people around a seven-acre wall. Why, take them days. So they had a 
a, 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 a remnant. Did you hear me? A remnant. And they had in that remnant the people of God, the people of God who had been soldiers, the people of God who hadn't been soldiers, and they had the seven priests, and they had the, the army. They were all there together. That's what the church is supposed to be like. All of us have a responsibility. It's not up to the professional pastors and preachers. It's up to the army of God made up all of God's people. And we're all to come together to make a force for the kingdom of God. Amen. Every one of you is a responsibility, and just like I do, to join in and be part of the force that's going to change this world. And we've got to have that force, but we've got to come together. Now we know that the number seven means completion, that everything was done. That's the, that's the word for grace. Grace is God's divine enablement for us to do what we can't do ourselves. It's God's supernatural enforcement that he brings to it. And when we come together and in full alignment, you're going to see an unprecedented force and you're going to see walls come down. I'm prophesying it to you today. I'm telling you that it's going to happen and our job is to come into one body, one flesh, one blood, one life, one people, one church, one dedication to the Holy Spirit and to the kingdom of God. And so we begin to see this picture. They were in alignment. They were there and they were told, now you do exactly, exactly what I say. You see, it's a combination of the Lord had promised them the, the promised them the territory. He said, I have given it to you. Now, what we do as a church, oh God, I got a prophecy. You're going to do all these things to me. Woo, I'm going to go home and sit down and wait for it to happen. Thank you, Jesus. Bring it on. Woo, money's going to go through your hands. Amen. Thank you. You're going to travel to nation. All right, God. And then you, you, you quit studying. You quit preparing. You quit praying. You quit going. You quit doing. You start just waiting there, waiting for the Spirit. But the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm giving it to you. I'm prophesying it. Now get busy. Get ready. Get postured. You don't go to war without learning a little bit about war. You don't go without learning a little bit how to pray for the victory. And so it was those people. He said, now I want you to do it exactly like I say. I want you to run, go around here every day, once a day, for six days. I just want you to go around here. God, that doesn't make any sense. You could do this in one day. Why don't you just do it in one day? Because I'm going to teach you who's in charge. I'm going to let you know who's the captain of the host. I'm going to teach you who teaches you how to win the war. You don't win it by waiting on me. You got to get with me. We are co-laborers with Christ. He has called us to be co-labor. He said, join my army. He said, go ye into all the world and preach and teach the gospel to every nation, to every people, every tribe, and teach them whatsoever things I've taught you. Re be reproducers of reproducers. And so they did it. And if you go back over and it may cause me to go back and look into Isaiah 53, 54, 55. Don't get nervous. I'm not going to, I'm not going to read all of that scripture. But you see, when you go to Isaiah 53, you get the suffering service. He looked at him and he despised him. What did that mean that God despised him? That meant that he had to separate his righteousness from his righteousness. And any time God looks on unrighteousness, he despises unrighteousness and wants to take on and provide righteousness. But he looked upon our sins on the cross and he gave the suffering service servant the blood that he had to let go that that we could have life. And so we go over there. And he said, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should love him. He says it, 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 it proves, it pleased him to bruise him. God, how he loved us. Oh, how God must love us. Oh, how God must love us, church. It pleased him to bruise him. In other words, for he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. And then I go to chapter 54 and I went back and read all these and it said that, you know, that once he came and then what were the results? We came because of, the, because of him. Oh, barren, you have been not, you have 
you who have been born, break into the singing and cry aloud. You who also have labored with child for more of the children of the desolate. He goes on and praises what has happened because of suffering service, servant. And then we get to Isaiah 55. After chapter 42 of Isaiah, the separation is the coming of bondage and the release of all the things that God has prepared for us. And then he said, now you don't understand that. It doesn't, you don't understand how a suffering servant could come and suffer and die and bleed and, and give his blood for you. And yet you are now like an open, an open forest. A, a beautiful land has been given to you. And you say, well, how could that happen? And then he says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. He's preaching to it. And the unrighteous man is thought, let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy. And then he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. We don't do it our way. We do it God's way. When I listen to the people, listen to experts, and, and some of our doctors have become more famous than Jesus. I'm telling you what's the truth. I hear people listening to commentators, and they listen more to them than they do to the Word of God. But I'm going to tell you something. His ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. Just like the rain and the snow comes down and parts you onto the parched earth and seeps into it and, and becomes soaked with righteousness and truth, that is what it is that we need to listen to the word of God because his ways are not our ways and his ways, his word shall not return boy, but accomplish the wherein he sent it and prosper in the things that he pleases. We're going to see God's word come to reality. Amen. If you can't tell, I'm kind of charged. <laughs> So I, I went back and I read that and I said, thank you, Jesus. Know your ways. I don't see how we can bring these walls down. I don't see how these, all of this stress can become, this distress can be, and stress can become peace. But you said, you said, you said if we will come to you and do not forsake you and, and seek the Lord and he will be found and amen and amen. Now we know that this is, they had to be one of the things that's really hard to understand is they had to be silent. Now, used to, I, in the old days, I would have said there were no women in that army because they couldn't be silent. But I don't say that now because my wife would get on to me. <laughs> Amen. But they had to walk, and, and they had to walk it out, and they had to t not talk it out. Why? Because God didn't want any murmuring. He didn't want any distractions. He didn't want any doubt and unbelief. He didn't want them. To, he wanted them focused on God. He wanted to focus on what they were doing. And they were going to walk around there. And when you don't talk, you think. When you listen, yeah, they were listening to the Lord. And they were listening and believing. Now, we're doing exactly what he said. He said, be quiet, walk around here seven times and shout on the seventh time, blow the horn, shout, and we'll see the walls come tumbling down. And they came down flat, flat. It says they were totally, and they went in and took everything. The battle is the Lord's, but we're his army. And we're to go in and take it in. Now, let me tell you, church, I want to tell you, it's going to take a strong remnant. And I'm calling the body of Christ and I'm calling the Life Center Ministry to rise up and take up our swords. I'm causing the Life Center Ministry to take up our spears of righteousness, our sword of the word, and to gird our loins with the peace and uh, our truth and our feet with peace. But we've got to get ready because we're entering into a battle right now. But the battle is ours. But we've got a lot of resistance. 50% in the country, in this country, this great United States, don't even know what's going on spiritually. They have no idea what God's up to. They are totally un, 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 uninvolved. And then 37% are against the church. 
in this country. They don't think that we're relevant. They don't think the truth is, is in the Word of God. Everybody's got their own little way, and we just, as long as you have a way, that's the main thing. 37%. And that only leaves 13% called the church. It's going to rise up and take it for the nation, not because of the church, but because the church is rightfully belongs here. It was ordained in purpose to be here. It's our season, our time, and our way. But we must rise up and be an army to take it. And so it was that there was only one that was saved out of that whole group called Rahab. Rahab the harlot. Oh, my goodness. The two spies were sent in. And when they got there, they got over the wall and they got inside and they checked things out. And it did. they were saying to themselves, how are we going to make it? And then here comes the Rahab, the harlot, the prostitute, invites them and protects them. And breathes in. I don't, I think that's what happened. I don't know what they were doing there. I, I, I don't know. But they were there. And they were there because for some reason that's where the safest place in town was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, those that had been there didn't want to tell on anybody else. <laughs> but anyway, they, she did what she you, you remember she put out the scarlet robe. That meant that they were going to uh, ribbon and that was going to save her. And they did save her because she fulfilled her commitment. She kept saying to the, to the spy, she said, where y'all been? We've been looking for you. Everybody knows God's with you. We heard of all the stories of how the victory was. We forget those victories sometimes. And sometimes it takes somebody that, that really is desperate to know God to tell us the truth about things. Those that have been through it and know what victory means. And so it was that she saved them. But let me tell you another reason it was important because God's promises. She was the great grandmother of David. And, they, and he was bringing the progeny and the inheritance because you see he had made a promise that one day out of thy seed Abraham will become a savior of the world and she was part of that lineage and it tells us that in Matthew she was part of the lineage of the kingdom and so she was being preserved and prepared I'm going to tell you what you're the, you're the results of somebody's praying before you it may have been a grandfather or grandmother or great aunt or somebody, but somebody prayed you through. And don't you, don't just fully, we don't even forget it. We cannot forget that we are the progeny. We are the legacy of somebody's prayers. I know my grandmother prayed and I know my mother prayed and I'm sure it took all of it. And my wife prays. Come on, till you know. Well, let me tell you where the church is prophetically today. First, the church is going through a cleansing. We, things that we didn't want exposed are being exposed. We're looking on the inside to know not what's on the outside, but God's looking on the heart. He's looking on the inside and he's saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're not ready for the victory yet. You've been to Canaan, you're still trying to look for that manna. You still want manna to fall down for you every day. And God says, the manna's over. It's time to enter in and claim that which is rightfully yours. But you're not going to get there waiting on the manna to show up when it's over. Mm. The manna was over. The, the Canaan that they had been promised, they had waited 40 years for it. They couldn't believe they were right there on the doorstep. And why would you say, and like most of us say, God, you promised we're right here. It's almost within reach and we can almost touch it. And now you got to go through this big old wall. There's no way, God. I thought you were for it. And God said, I've given it to you. Hear me, church. He's given it to us. He's given it to us. It's our heritage. It's our promise. It's our prophetic word. And so we are, and then he's doing it. First thing he do is cleansing the church. And believe it or not, he's, second thing he's doing with the church is entering into rest. We're entering into a rest. While we're pulled back and we're waiting, we say, let me rest. Let me see. Before I get into battle, I got to be silent. I got to listen. I got to pray. I got to look inside of me. What's going on on the inside of me that ain't right? As I remember, we used to say in South Georgia, he ain't right. Well, let me tell you, we ain't right if our souls are not ready for what's happening. Don't you know? <laughs> 
And so he's, we're in, we're first we're being cleansed, just like he cleansed the temple. He went in and cleansed the temple. He said, we got to get right. We got to get it ready. We got to get it ready. I'm about to get ready to release a salvation experience for everyone, but I got to cleanse this old religion out of the place. I got to give this victimhood gone. I got to get rid of all this entitlement. It's got to go right now, and you got to be ready to let God do his work for us. And then we are now, we've got the third thing we've got to rise up and do and have no fear of man. We got to be a church that rises up and speaks truth, speaks truth, not confusion, truth. What is truth? When we start speaking truth, it'll break every yoke and set every captive free. But we got to speak the truth and be ready. Well, I've got a name for it. I'll tell you where we are. I got it figured out. <laughs> it's called SDD. Say SDD. Thank you. You didn't know what you were saying, but you said it anyway. Thank you so much. Spiritual deficit disorder. We're suffering from SDD. Spiritual deficit disorder. We have forgotten the right order in which we are supposed to follow God. We're suffering from a spiritual lack. We've, we've forgotten what the spirit can do. We have a disorder called a spiritual deficit disorder. Say it for me. Spiritual deficit disorder. That's what we're suffering from. And when we get past that and get healed, we're going to see a church rise up and take its rightful place in, in, the, in the world, in the country, and do the things. Yes, sir. We, we have another way of calling it. We have exercise form over substance. Yes, form over something. It, you know the old expression, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck and it looks like a duck, but it, you can't call it something else. It's a duck. When we know that God is who God says he is, then we have a spiritual order. But when we talk like him and, and, and look, try to look like him, but we have no substance in our life. Are you sure, Holy Spirit? I don't think you want me to say that. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, the Holy Spirit is the answer. You remember I read, he's the captain of the coast. He's there with the drawn sword. And you say, you're for us or against us, Holy Spirit. That depends on you. I'm, who, I'm, I'm, one, I'm the one that's with God. You see, Jesus came to earth, showed us love, showed us obedience. He showed us that no matter what the joy set before him, he could endure all the shame and all of the cross because that joy was his driving force that I'm going to please the father. The father's going to have a son. He's going to have a family. He's going to have a generation that'll love him. And so we know that that, that was his quest before. But the Holy Spirit, when Jesus went up, the spirit came down. Now the spirit is right here in the this morning. Your spirit is here. Say, the spirit's here. That's a corporate spirit. But when you leave here, he doesn't stay here. Did you hear what I mean? He goes with you in your soul, in your spirit. He goes with you. And what you come in here for and we come together for is get our spirit activated, energized, and ready to do the work that we're called to do. Give him some praise, will you, in the house? Give him some praise. Let him be praised in the house. Thank you, Lord. All right, there are walls to come down. DDS, do you like that? <laughs> spiritual, SDD, spiritual de deficit disorder. Now, listen, we want the walls of injustice, racism, prejudice to come down. Listen, church, we all want that. I want that. You want that. Any of God's people want that. That's love. We want justice. We want things set in place. But we first got to look at some walls that we're dealing with on the inside of us. Some of our own lackness and some of our own deficit that we're dealing with. We talk about the walls coming down, but we better look at the wall of anger that's in us. We better say, wait a minute, wall of anger. When you come down, the walls will come down. The walls of anger. How, well, you know what anger is based in? Pride. Pride. Pride says, I'm right. 
You're wrong. I'm right. No matter what, I'm right. Pride is the anger, builds the anger because when I can't fulfill what I believe is right, I get frustrated and frustration leads to anger when it's not dealt with. And so we get angry, we get upset, but God is saying, I'm a God of peace, I'm a God of uh, bringing it down. So let's let that anger come down so we can talk and walk and, and be aligned with God. That's called humanism. The wall of indifference. The wall of indifference, we're waiting on God and God saying, start praising, start praying, start fasting and you'll begin to see the walls come down. But we got to bring back prayer and we got to bring back fasting to the church. It's a, listen, listen, listen. It's not a convenience. It's not a, we call it relevance. And I don't care how big your biceps are or how tight your jeans are. You cannot, if you don't reproduce, reproducer, you ain't doing no good. Come on, I said it, I'm... <laughs> it's got to, we've got to bring down, quit the, in, the worldly system. We call it relevant. It's gone until it's irrelevant. Till we're no longer relevant to God, we're relevant to the world. And we're a business of entertainment rather than a business of transformation, of changing lives so that lives can go forth and have fullness as they were intended. Then we talk about the wall of ease and comfort that we've enjoyed so much. We blend it so into the worldly system. We got to learn the wall of sacrifice in us. It's got to bring down the other wall. Let's bring down the wall of discipline. Let's bring down, let's put back the wall of discipline. Let's, let's bring down the wall of indifference that we have and begin to put back the sacrifice that's needed. Church, we're going to have to sacrifice some. You're going to have to give up some of those things that you thought you were all right with just because others did it. Come on, church. You know I'm right. You know it's God. Come on. And you know we talk about the, 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 the world that we want to bring down the walls of lack. Well, let's first get focused on him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness. Then all of these things shall be added unto you. We say, God, how could you not worry about us? Look at how my lack. He said, don't why I'm looking at sparrows and, they, and, they, and I take care of them. And I look at the hairs on your head. I know every one of them. And the ones that used to be there, he still knows about them. But I'm I'm telling you, change our focus. Look on the inside first. We want the walls to come down, but if we keep coming out of anger and, and distrust and lack of trust and no, no alignment, you see, the walls came down when they got aligned. And that was what the message was. When you bring all the different people together, all the, all the cultures, the ethnic groups, the races, and the, and the indifference, and, and focus upon Jesus Christ as the Lord of hosts, the Holy Spirit as the director and commander of the army, then we'll begin to see the walls come down. Amen? All right. So it was that the walls did come down because the walls of lack, the walls of anger, the walls of worldliness, the walls of pride. I had to, if they want all those things, have got to come down in us if we want to see the walls of separation come. Well, you say it was pretty, people look at that and they say, wait a minute. Oh my Jesus, what is that? They went into the city and destroyed everything. Children. Fathers, mothers, animals, everything destroyed them all. God, that's not sweet. That doesn't sound like sweet Jesus to me. Come on, that doesn't sound right. Why would you destroy innocent children and innocent things? And I'll tell you why. And it's not, a, it's not an easy story. It's not an easy thing to swallow. But you see, they were all indoctrinated with the wrong system, the wrong spirit. And, and it was such that it, it, it's infectious. And we've allowed this infectious spirit of the world where we've gotten to places I never thought we'd get to. We're doing things as a church and tolerating things as a church I never thought we would because we allowed the, per, the spirit to intoxicate us and, and, and it's a virus and it's a virus that will infect us. And he said, I got to get rid of the virus totally. I got to wipe it out because you've come 40 years to get to this place and I cannot, I'd rather blend you together. My heart would be to put you together and make you one people all serving, them. but they were not willing to serve God. You see, God's, we got to preach that part of God too. 
we believe in sweet Jesus, and I preach it, and every, and to, we preach it to the extent that we don't call enough on righteousness. Righteousness, right living, right relationship. And so it was that that, that was the message. But I, I can take you back to all the way back to Acts 5, Ananias and Safari. Look at that situation. Here they were, they were actually believers. These were non-believers and these were believers. And you see, they came with the, with the idea that they would sell their land and give it all to, the, all to the body, all to the church. And they would do it. But when the time came to split it up, they thought, well, maybe a tithe would be enough. I promised it all, but you know, I was in a real state of religious ecstasy or something. I don't know. <laughs> I was feeling so good. And I'll do it, God. Let me tell you, church, I'm tired of us trying to manipulate God. I'm tired of us doing it because it ain't working. That old expression, how's it working for you? It's not. And so then he said to Ananias, you lied to the Holy Spirit. Well, we've all lied to the Holy Spirit. We've all made, we've all made promises we didn't keep. Come on, you know I'm right. I've said them, you have. We've all said things in the time of frustration and, and desperateness. And he said, but don't you see, the church was growing. It was pure. It was spreading. It was impacting. It was making lives change. And the Holy Spirit was in charge, but they lied to the Holy Spirit and that released a spirit of lying in that church. And that was going to take on and spread throughout the church. So Peter, you know what he said, this day your life is, bam, out, gone. Ooh, that's scary, isn't it? You know, but it's the spirit that's got to be made clean. And when we get serious with God, he'll get serious with us. Come on, church. It's not about works. It's about obedience. It's about discipline. It's about being faithful. It's about doing what you're supposed to do. Well, we, got to, we know that the wall of compromise, we wanted to come down, but we've got to have more fruit, more to see the fruit. The wall of performance needs, takes more passion. In Psalm 71, 78, it said, I have become a, listen, this is David speaking. He, he, so, he was so honest about, with things. I had, that's why God loved him. He was a man after God's heart because he was honest before God. Once he saw the truth, he changed to align with the truth. Sometimes he was like the rest of us. He got deceived by the things he saw or heard or believed. I have become a wonder to many, he says, but you are my strong refuge. You're the place I go when I think I'm hot stuff. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and your glory all the day. He took himself off the top and put God back on the top. Where well, we're coming to the end of this, but anyway, I want to read Joshua's final words over in the in Joshua, uh, over in Joshua 23. I think I think there are only 24 chapters in here. But let me read that to you. This is after Joshua. They won. They've taken the land. They split it in ten and two tribes. They're all ready to go and. And Joshua's now, he's about completed his assignment that God had given him. And he says, 14 and through 16. All right, let me see. And with, nope, wrong one. Here we go. Behold this day, I am going the way of all the earth, as we will all one day. And you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing has failed for all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one word of them has failed. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all the good things have come upon you which the Lord your God promised you, so the Lord will bring upon you all harmful things until he has destroyed you from the good land which the Lord your God has given you. So the Lord your God promised you, so the Lord will bring upon you all these things if you forsake him. Listen, church, God's given us great prophetic promises. And he wants us to enjoy them and embrace them. He wants us to have his presence. And he's willing and has given us everything that we possibly need. But we have to do the things that he, the basic things. Believe, pray, discipline, understand, and live 
as well as we can and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. Is that too hard? Isn't that, the, isn't that what it is? Yes, it's simple, but it's not easy. It's not easy because you've got combative forces. That's why I started off this morning breaking those assignments that the enemy has assigned to you. You have got, just like you've got guardian angels, you've got demons that have been assigned to you to penetrate you. And the thing that he can do, the demonic forces can do is divide you. First di divide you on the inside with doubt and unbelief, then divide you with people that you're proposed to be in contact. There's something going on special. I can tell you that. I know that it is. I know that we're going to see a change in the message. We're going to begin to hear the old, the old message, as we call it, is coming back because God's ready to change hearts and he's ready to change life and he's trying, trying to get us into an alignment. He's not a hard God. He's not a demanding God. He broke down religion, but he sure does want relationships satisfied. He wants relationships brought together in trust and in belief and in the way to, uh, that we can be in union unity and alignment. How many agree with me on that? Can I get an agreement this morning? If you agree with me, let me see you raise your hand this morning. Let's just see you. Let's stand to our feet and let me pray for you this morning. Oh, how we love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first. All right, Mario, give me a key and I'll sing it. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first. Ah, let's sing it one more time from our heart to him. Come on, let's go. Oh, how I love Jesus. Father, we thank you today that you bring to us the power to break yokes, that you bring with the power of your spirit to set every captive free that will hear your voice. We thank you today that you loved us first and died for us, that we might live, you died. So I declare the blood of Jesus over all of us here today. I declare that the blood of Jesus has not only set us free from sin, but it preserves us to do the work that you have called us to do. Let us rise up as a mighty army. Let us come around and look at our own soul and allow the big walls to come down because we break the little walls inside of us. Bring us into unity. Align us with the truth of the Christ himself and set us free, Lord, to do the work that you've called us to do. I thank you today for everyone that's committed their hearts today and said, you know, I've really gotten a little lax. I've really gotten a little slack. I, I, I realize, Lord, that I've, I've leaned on your grace about all you're going to let me, that your calling and your mercy has been extended. But Lord, I thank you for that. Now I want to walk it out. I want to talk it out. I want to keep silent and let you talk. I want to allow you to be the one that's going to come. Direct me to be the man of God or woman of God you called me to be. And I dedicate myself and re surrender again to you. In Jesus' name, if that's your prayer, say amen this morning. Oh, let's give Jesus a big old hand. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to his name. What a powerful word. Can we give Apostle Buddy another hand? Wow. Thank you, Apostle Buddy. Amen. Amen. And you want to replay that. So whatever device you have, Facebook, go to our website. There's some things you want to take down about that word again so we can be clear 
that we taking the walls down. I'm going to take mine down. Mine are down. Mine are down. I, I'm going into the land of milk and honey that God promised me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if there's anyone here who's never welcomed Jesus into their life, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. You can't wait. Tomorrow's not promised to you. And so now is the time if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Is there anyone here who does not know Christ as their Lord and Savior? You don't have to be afraid. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you, he, the word says you shall be saved. Is there anyone here? There may be someone online who has never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And maybe you did and you just backslid and you said, God, I don't know how to come back from that. But you can, you can. He's a forgiving God. He's cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. All he wants you to do is acknowledge that he's God. So even for those online, we'll just pray this prayer together, you know, as we usher in his presence. And for those who may not know him, would you repeat after me? Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to change me. I ask you to purge me. I ask you to mold me and make me just like you. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you, Lord God, to create a new life within me. And God, I will love you and praise you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, it's just so simple. You can go to salvation at lifecenter.org and we can give you more information about who Jesus Christ is. Amen. Amen. And we're a growing church. The Life Center, here we equip saints. There is just such a greatness in being part of this ministry because you don't just stay where you are, you grow. And if you have not, if you have a church, haven't had a church home and you've been looking around and you've been searching the internet for different places and you fell upon this ministry, I think it's because God wanted you to be here. And if you'd like to be a part of this ministry, we'd like you to go to Welcome Center at lifecenter.org if you want to be a part of this great ministry. And I know there's plenty, but I know this is a great ministry. We learn, we grow, grow and we are equipped here to do the work of the ministry. Amen. Amen. Now, will you stand so we can be dismissed? Hallelujah. Glory. Father, we thank you for this glorious day. We thank you for your presence, oh God. Okay, I think I'm missing something. Okay. After I pray, then stay tuned for the announcements. So, Father, we thank you on today, Lord, for your loving kindness, for your tender mercy. We thank you that our walls are coming down. We thank you, Lord God, that our walls have come down. God, we thank you for your word on today that remind us, Lord God, that we're going into the land of milk and honey, that you have greatness for us, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your word tells us, Lord God, there is no lack where it concerns you, Lord God. Father, you're a good God. You're an awesome God, worthy to be praised, Lord. So we go into the land of milk and honey, Lord. We rise up as an army on today, Lord God. And Father, we take our orders and we go in and tear down all strongholds on today, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we know that we are powerful. 
that we know we have a purpose. We know that you have a plan for us. So we thank you, Lord God, and we praise you, Lord God, that it is already done within us, Lord God. Every wall has come down on today, Lord, in our hearts, in our families, in our minds, in our relationships. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And stay tuned for the announcements. Amen. Let's be seated, children. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship experience. We're so glad to have you with us today. Don't worry. I'm not here to take another offering. I'm just here to tell you about some amazing things that we have going on here at the Life Center. We believe in equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. We want to make sure that you're able to take part with what's going on here at the Life Center. So check out these announcements. You brought yourself, you brought into, yourself into this place to learn. Like the more that we connect with the Spirit of God and that revelation and that understanding of what it is that He has provided for us, you're able to walk more and more in Christ-like nature. It is progressive, it is a process, it is a journey that we are all on and we're all at different places on that journey. If you have experienced job loss or remain unemployed or underemployed due to the recent global coronavirus pandemic, then get ready to recalibrate, reset, and be renewed in your career and career outlook. Introducing for the first time the Marketplace Alliance Group's free virtual career summit, Saturday, October 3rd, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Marketplace Alliance Group structured this virtual event to have specialists in specific topics from different industries to speak to all career levels and industries. We have approximately 24 speakers who will present for 30 minutes and will remain available for 10 minutes to answer any questions you may have. You'll learn how to search in the market today how to transition from one job or career to another, what employers are looking for, how to maximize your employee benefits, gain financial information from financial experts, and a whole lot more. There are no other events that is this comprehensive being offered. So register today at MarketplaceAlliancegroup.com. The Marketplace Alliance Group's free virtual career summit Saturday, October 3rd, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. You know an event like this will fill up quickly, so register today before it's too late. We're mag, We're mag for you, taking you step by step toward your success.